Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. This is the Heart of David International Ministries. I'm your pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. It is Saturday morning. Hallelujah. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, July the 9th. Glory to your name. Let me give you my subject, and then we're going to go ahead and pray. My subject is, have you truly forgiven? Can you truly forgive? Hallelujah. And we're coming out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 37. That's our base scripture. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Let me go ahead and... Uh, uh, let me go ahead and... Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now, Lord, with the most meek and humble hearts as we can, Father God. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you speak to our heart, that you speak to our mind, and that you speak to our spirit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now and we ask that you forgive us for everything that we did, everything that we said, and everything we thought about that was wrong. Father God, we thank you for purging us, Lord. We want to be holy. We want to be righteous. We want to be a holy vessel that you can use, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we bind every lying spirit, every spirit of deception, every familiar spirit in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' mighty name. You have no place here in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you bless homes, Lord. Bless homes, bless families, Father God. Don't let the devil come in and tear up their home, Father God. Tear up their marriage, tear up their children in the name of Jesus. Now, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the anointing in your word. Lord, we pray for miracles and we pray for signs and wonders, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that blind eyes be open, Lord, and that the lame to walk and the dumb to talk, Lord, that blind eyes be open, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We receive it, we believe it, because is in your word, Father. We pray that you give us childlike faith in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen again, glory. <clears throat> I just want to remind you, we also have a, <clears throat> a YouTube page and a, a, a Facebook page, hallelujah. And you can go there, and it's the Heart of David International Ministries. <clears throat> You'll see my picture on there. Hallelujah. I think it's the picture of me and my boys. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about uh, have you truly forgiven and can you truly forgive? Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Have you truly uh, forgiven and can you truly forgive? Now, you have to do that because it's the word of God. God has forgiven you for all that you've done that was wrong, not just when you wasn't saved and give, get, giving your life to Christ, but we talking about even after you gave your life to Christ. There's stuff you messed up on, you aired in, some of it was intentional, some of it was unintentional. Hallelujah. So can you truly forgive? <clears throat> Have you truly forgiven and can you truly forgive? That's coming out of uh, Luke chapter six, and we're going to start and uh, verse 27, let me just say this. There was an incident that happened just recently. And uh, I, I was upset. I was upset. I was, look, I was ready to go to jail. I was ready to do prison time. I was ready to go. I just, I told myself, hey, that I'm, that's what I'm about to do. Thank God, God is good. That's why you are supposed to be angry and sin not. That's the Bible. There's nothing wrong with you getting angry, but he tells you do not sin. Hallelujah. Getting angry, do not sin. Don't be cussing nobody out. Don't be, don't be punching out somebody's car window because you mad. Hallelujah. And I can understand you can get mad. I, I do. 
but he's telling you to be angry and sin not because even when you're angry, you still have to show the love of Christ Jesus on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Now, let me just read and I'll go into the story a little bit later. Let's go to Luke chapter six and let's go to uh, verse 27. Whoo. Mm. But I say unto you, which here, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. See, that's a whole nother thing. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. That's a whole nother thing. Glory to God. Verse 27 said, but I say unto you, mm, which here, love your enemies. How many people are going to love their enemies? Hey, mm, do good to them which hate you. Somebody hates you, you don't want to do good to them, but that's in the word. Now, let me let me uh, get something straight. I'm not telling you to let somebody walk over you and do whatever they want to do. No, you still got to use wisdom. But you also are supposed to pray for your enemies, pray for the people who hate you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to pray. Why? Because prayer has power. I'm talking about when you really get down to pray. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory. So now your enemies, when they come after you, it is hard because you got to stay saved. Listen, being saved don't mean you're a knucklehead. Don't mean you dumb and stupid and can't do nothing. God to give you a strategy to do it. But sometimes during the midst of, uh, uh, of that encounter, you mad. And now your flesh kicking up. Hallelujah. And now you ain't thinking nothing about Jesus. The only thing you saying is, Lord, I'm going to have to repent when I get to church and I go to the altar. I may have to do some jail time, but amen, God is still good. I may have to go to prison, but amen, God is still good. Mm. Glory to God. I may get a criminal record, but God is still good. That's where he tells you to be angry and sin not. Hallelujah, because once you get angry, you will be in prison. And once you get angry, you will have that criminal record. Hallelujah. There was an incident where it just happened just recently. I, I literally told myself, I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to go to prison. I'm going to have a record. I'm just going to have to start a prison ministry. I, I, I know I'm going to do some time because if I see this person, I'm going to do my best to hurt him. Hallelujah. And, 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 and you, you can't do that because you really got to allow God to work and, and you got to show the love of Christ. Now, God is good because I didn't see that person and we would have been fighting. It would have been on the news, preacher in a street fight. Preacher goes to jail for assault and battery with attempted murder. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. So now, even in your anger, you cannot retaliate that way. If they're coming up to you, yes, defend yourself. But don't just go up there and, and knock somebody out. That's what I felt like doing. Knocking them out. Didn't care if I went to jail. Didn't care if, if I was going to prison. I, I told myself, well, hey, I'm probably going to have to do some time. So I got to find somebody to watch my boys while I'm spending this time locked up. Hallelujah. But God is a way maker. God is a way maker. Hallelujah. And I, I haven't been that angry in, in years. <laughs> I'm not going to go into all the details, but uh, I thought the person was wrong. It didn't show any kind of maturity. You know, it involved my kids. And uh, yeah, I was ready to fight physically my, you know my motto was well, hey may the best man win that's what I was saying so now you really have to go back to be angry and sin not hallelujah I said be angry and sin not because if you let your emotions get the best of you you're going to be locked up over something that only took you a couple of seconds to do 
and that those five to ten seconds then ruin your life. Mm, glory to God. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 26. Let's do this real quick. Hallelujah. Glory to glory to glory. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. He says this, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Be angry and sin not. And don't let the sun go down. Mm, glory to God upon your wrath, which means in that day, I said in that day, you still have to forgive. You know, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. You have to forgive, even though you want to fight, even though you want to hurt the person and, and you save. Hallelujah. You got to show Christ Jesus. Uh, all right. They right here if you're looking for them. Huh? Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. So when he tells you to be angry and sin not and don't let the sun grow down on your wrath, that means you must forgive. Cause listen. It's even so deep to the point to where if you mad at somebody and you end up dying that night, you may not get into heaven. Why? Because you had unforgiveness in your heart. God has forgiven you for everything. I mean, you came to the cross. You, you, Jesus washed me in the blood of Jesus, and he has forgiven you, and he has mercy on you. Now you need to forgive somebody and you need to have mercy on them. Again, that does not mean glory to God, that you're going to hang out with them, that you're going to be around them, but you have to forgive. And I, I tell you this all the time, even if they don't admit they're wrong, you have to forgive them. Even if they say you're lying, you have to forgive them. Even if they say, oh, well, you should have knew better or they should have knew better, you still got to forgive. Why? Because you are a child of the most high God. You have to show love. Listen, you got to show love even in your anger. Hallelujah. I said, you got to show love even in your anger. Now, I will be honest with you. I can't tell you what I would have did if I would have seen the person once I first found out. I can't. I can't tell you I was mad. I can't tell you, you know, Amen. Glory be to God. But, you know, uh, and, and I told myself, Lord, amen, I'm just going to go to jail today. That's what I said. But when you do that, something that will take you five to ten seconds to do or something under 30 seconds to do can ruin your life. It'll ruin your life. It'll ruin your family's life, your kid's life. One thing that happened in, in uh, 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 you know, a five or 10 second span has ruined people's lives, ruined their life, ruined their family's life, ruined the other family's life. So that's why when you be angry and sin not, there's nothing wrong with you being angry. But if you're trying to put a hole in the wall or trying to uh, 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 beat up your wife, and nowadays wives trying to beat up their husband, you can't do that. Glory to God. And you say, I said, and you saved. So that's where the problem come in. <clears throat> Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27 again. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Your wrath is your anger. Whew, glory to God. Neither give place to the devil. Because once you get angry and once you get mad, 
half the time you ain't thinking about Jesus. You ain't thinking about quoting no, no, no scriptures. You ain't thinking about being in the presence of the Lord. You in your flesh, you're going to stay in your flesh and you may do something that'll cost you your life, whether it's your physical, natural life, or it's going to cost you your life where you're going to end up in prison and you're going to do a whole bunch of time. So that's why it has to come down to that we have to apply this word to our life. Look, even when we are mad, hallelujah, even when we are mad, we cannot react off of anger and we cannot mm, give place to the devil. Once you get angry, the devil is coming in. He's trying to exploit you. He's trying to get you something to get you to do something that you've never done. Hallelujah. He's trying to uh, influence you to do something. Listen, you can say no, but you so much in your flesh for, for some people, you just mad. You mad at everybody. For some people, it's just revenge. And then for some people, particularly kids or Younger people, they up here just want to rebel, just want to rebel, just make you mad. I can do what I want to do. I don't care. Okay. Okay. Now, listen, I'm not telling you, uh, 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 you know, the Bible says spoil, spare the rod, spoil the child, but we got to do that in wisdom. Hallelujah. We get, look, the Bible said you 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 chasing that child, you drive that spirit far from them. And sometimes it make the kid matter and get more rebellious. But hey, get, look, I, I get it out. You better be hollering Jesus and I ain't going to stop until I know you mean it for real. So when the Bible tells you to be angry and sin not and don't let the sun go down on your wrath, listen. This past week, I was praying. I was mad. I was ready to go to uh, fight. I was ready to go to jail. I was ready to do time if I had to. Yes, I was. But, or by the grace of God, I didn't see the person. I'm calmed down. I'm still upset, but I'm still praying, Lord, I need you to help me. Not just with my anger. I don't like the situation, the how it went on, but I need to forgive and you need to show me how to forgive. See, now we got to apply the word to your life, even when it hits you in your heart. Even when it hits the most precious thing to you. Hey, glory to God. You still got to, you still can be angry, but you can... Be angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down on your wrath. You got to forgive that night. See, a lot, this is me. I believe a lot of people are sick because they have not forgiven someone or some people. And I've said it earlier. Even if they don't admit they are wrong, you have to forgive so you can go on uh, and move on with your own life. I just want them to say, I'm sorry. They may not ever say they're sorry. They may not ever acknowledge they're wrong. You got to forgive because that's what God told you to do. Hallelujah. And it'll help you move on with your life. You got people that's so bitter, so mad, so angry. I believe a lot of their sickness because they have unforgiveness. Remember the subject. Have you truly forgiven and can you truly forgive? The answer is yes. Have you truly forgiven? Listen, I know it may take time to truly forgive somebody, but you got to work on it. Every time you think about it, you get mad and you're ready to fight all over, but you got to work on it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 27 in Ephesians 4 and 27. Neither give place to the devil. When he's talking about neither give place to the devil, that's like I told you. Look, at the time, I didn't, I was ready to go to jail. I'm going to jail. 
probably gonna be in prison. They're gonna they're gonna give me some time. Hopefully, I can plea bargain. I'll be out in five six years. I gotta find somebody to watch my boys. I gotta, you know, I'm just gonna have to start a prison ministry. But you gotta understand <clears throat> when when parents go to jail, it affects the children. It does. And and, and, and you know, your mama in prison for 10 years, your daddy in prison for nine years, it affects the children. Hallelujah. It, 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 it's, 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 it's like a divorce, but it's a forced divorce. Divorce hurts kids too. So, and I'm, I, and I'm a divorcee. Listen, I tell everybody who married, you better work it out. And if one person don't work it out, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen. Y'all gotta come together. Y'all gotta work it out for the kids. If, it, if not for you, for the kids. And it's hard, it's painful, you're going to cry, you're going to do a whole lot of stuff. But you got to get through it because you should not allow the devil to come into your home and destroy it. And y'all both supposed to be saved, y'all both speaking in tongues, y'all both saying hallelujah at church, and you can't work it out. Is one of y'all fault or is both of y'all fault? And you can't blame one more than the other. Because if the truth be told, everybody, both parties could have did something different and could have did something better. Hindsight. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back to uh, Luke chapter 6. Glory, glory, glory. Let's go back to Luke chapter six. Mm. 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 Let's go up to verse 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so do their fathers to the false prophets. Woe unto you if everybody speaking well unto you. If everybody speaking well unto you, woe unto you, the Bible says. Woo, glory to God. Because if you really following Christ, everybody ain't going to talk well of you. People are going to hate you just because you got a stand. I'm not talking about the hypocrites that go to church that don't have a stand and they ain't sin and they doing more sin than people out in the world. I'm talking about the ones who really got a relationship with Christ. Work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. You know what? Let's go up to verse 20, and I'm going to read down in the book of Luke chapter six. And we're going to uh, start at verse 20 and I'm going to do a little reading. And he lifted up his eyes on, on his disciples and said, blessed be, blessed be ye poor for your, yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now mm. for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast, and cast out your name as evil. For the son of man's sake, rejoice ye in the day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you mm, that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye, sh for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you 
that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did the for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Mm. Oh, glory to God. So did the fathers to the false prophets. He's telling you the prophets was prophesying lies, and they still speaking good of it. They know he ain't a man of God. They know he ain't listening to God, and they still trying to give him accolades, talking about God using you. The devil is a liar. This church better get back to sound doctrine and we want to see miracles. Why? That's in the word. We want to see signs and wonders. Why? That's in the word. Hallelujah. We want to see the lame to walk. Why? That's in the word. The dumb to talk. Why? That's in the word. Blind eyes open. That's in the word. We want to activate the power of the word in our life, and we have to be consecrated. We have to live for Christ to the best of our ability. Glory to God. Freely is a given, and freely shall you receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to verse 27. But I say unto you, which hear, mm, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Mm, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Go back to 28. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. So when he's saying bless them that curse you, when they're cursing you out, when they're spreading false rumors about you, they're trying to pull you down. They're doing what you call character assassination. And everything that they're saying is a lie. God has to vindicate you. Hallelujah. Your character in Christ Jesus will vindicate you. Your love for Christ Jesus, you living for Christ Jesus, is going to vindicate you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo. Verse 28 again. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Mm. And unto him that smites thee on one cheek, offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak Forbid him not to take your coat also. Mm. Mm. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So we got to understand, whoo, glory to God. You got to pray for those who despitefully use you. You got to pray for those who are your enemies. You got to pray for those who curse you, who talk about you. You still have to do that. Why? You are a child of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. To your mighty name. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's go ahead and read verse 31. And ask ye what that men should do to you. Do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what think, is, what think have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. He said, what good is it going to do to you for somebody you love because they loving you too? But, hallelujah, you got to love those who don't love you in Christ Jesus. Why? You have to show Christ in your life. It has to be in your action. It had to be in your walk. It's got to be in your talk. It's got to be in your demeanor. I'm not saying you don't ever get mad, and I'm not saying you don't ever get angry. 
But we read in Ephesians 4 and 26 where he said, be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. That means that day you have to forgive. I know it's hard. You up there all night, Lord, I forgive him. Lord, I forgive him. Lord, I forgive him. And you're saying it and you're being sincere, but in your heart you ain't. That's why you're saying it until you get in the until they get in your heart. Lord, I forgive him. Jesus, I forgive him. Lord, Lord, Lord. They did me wrong, but I forgive them. Hallelujah. Just as you showed me mercy, Lord Jesus, I want to show mercy, Father God. I didn't die on a cross for nobody, but you did, and that's what you told me to do. Hey, glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. I said glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We take you to another scripture real quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. So we're going to talk about forgiveness again. So when we go over to Matthew chapter 14, I mean chapter 6, and verse 14, he says this, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If ye forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Which means if you don't forgive nobody of their trespasses, of somebody offending you, God will not forgive you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Let's read verse 15 in Matthew 6 and 15. But if ye forgive not me and their trespasses, Neither shall your father forgive your trespasses. Mm. If you don't forgive men that offended you, that despitefully used you, mm, who have cursed you, mm. you got to forgive because God said, if you don't forgive them, I will not forgive you. God said, I sent my son down there to redeem mankind, to forgive mankind of sin, and you need to forgive. I know it's hard, and I know you got to work on it, but you got to work on it. You got to work on it to the point where you say, and you know I forgive them. Don't just say I forgive them. You got to truly forgive. Let's go back to the title. Have you truly forgiven, and can you truly forgive? Have you truly forgiven? And can you truly forgive? You can forgive somebody. I mean, truly forgive them. And have you actually did that? Have you forgave your mama for what she for what she did? Have you forgave your daddy for what she did, what he did? Have you forgiven mm, your wife for what she did? And have the woman forgiven her husband for what he did? Sometimes you're still married, but y'all ain't forgiving nobody. And my marriage can't work that way. You have to forgive in a marriage. You, you together every day. At some point in time, you're going to offend somebody. And it may not even be intentional. Lord Jesus, that's another subject. That's why you got to talk. Hallelujah. You just don't tuck tail and run because it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't going how I, I want it to go. Hallelujah. You need to go back and talk to some of these folks that have been married 40, 50, 60 years. Hallelujah. They'll tell you it'll get better. They'll tell you, I, I know it don't look like it. I know it don't feel like it, but it'll get better. You stay and you work at it. It'll get better. Hallelujah. I've been telling people, uh, 
I went to go visit one of my aunts and they've been married over 52 years. Hallelujah, 53 now. Whoo, glory to God. And I was amazed how they uh, uh, got along. I was, I, for me, when they had a disagreement or argument, it was almost a joke. They say what they had to say, okay. They went about their way. It wasn't no argument being mad at. Them. And talk to the old folks for a while. They'll tell you you have to forgive in your marriage. Hey, they're going to tell you as a parent, you're going to have to forgive your children. And they're going to tell the children, you being a child, you're going to have to forgive your parents. Hallelujah. It may hurt you to your heart. It may cut you to your core. But you truly have to forgive. Hallelujah. So you can be a functional person in this world. And the problem is uh, a lot of people in church ain't forgave. You have not forgiven your ex-husband. You have not forgiven your ex-wife. You have not forgiven your daddy. You have not forgiven your mama. You ain't forgave big mama. You ain't forgave granddaddy. You ain't forgave your uncle, your aunt, your cousin. You have not forgiven your best friend for something that happened 25 years ago. She did something and you was eight and now y'all 42 and you still mad and don't, don't won't talk to her. Don't be so petty. Hallelujah. Let's get back on the topic. Have you truly forgiven? And can you truly forgive him? Have you truly forgiven that person? And then can you truly forgive? The answer is yes, you can truly forgive. And look, it's going to take Jesus. Don't get me wrong. Cause why? Because the flesh don't want to do it. And the Bible tells you the flesh and the spirit war daily. Hallelujah. That's why you got to bring your flesh under subjection. So the spirit man on the inside of you can increase. Hey, glory to God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mm. Woo. Let's read. Uh, uh, let's go back to Matthew 6 and let's read. Uh, let's read verse 14 through 16, I believe it is. If ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And that was something different, but listen to me. We have to forgive. We have to forgive and Sometimes it takes it, it takes time, but you say, Lord, I truly want to forgive. I, I need to forgive so I can be a functional person. I need to forgive so I can get the, the goodness of God. I need to forgive so my blessings are not blocked because of unforgiveness. Hey, glory to your mighty name. I need to forgive, Lord, because you said love your enemies. Love those who despitefully use you. Mm. Glory to God. You have to show love in Christ Jesus again. That does not mean you become a doormat to somebody. That does not mean you let somebody walk all over you. Being humble does not mean you let anybody just do whatever they want and you ain't going to do nothing to say nothing. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about forgiveness and forgiveness got to come from the heart. And if you want really, if you really want something from Jesus, you have to forgive because he just told you, if you do not forgive, I will not forgive you. That's what Jesus said. My heavenly father won't forgive you if you can't forgive. 
Well, Lord, you know what they did, but you got to forgive them. Lord, they won't admit it, but you got to forgive them. Lord, they said I'm lying, but you got to forgive them. That is something that you have to do because you are a child of God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Go. Hallelujah. We have to forgive, saints. And, and, and the incident that happened, it hurt me to my heart. It hurt me to my heart. I blame the person. I blame my kids. They was there. I blame, but it, it hurt me to my heart. And I was ready to fight. I was ready to go to jail. I was ready to plead guilty to uh, attempted murder. <laughs> I wasn't going to kill him, but I was going to do my best to beat him down. Hallelujah. Listen, you have to be angry and sin not. And now you got to take inventory. Hey, I said you got to take inventory. Have you truly forgiven and can you truly forgive? See, when you ask the Lord to, to help me, I need to forgive. There's stuff deep down in your heart that when God starts touching it, it's so sensitive. A lot of times you shut him off to that part so you can't be healed. When you can't be healed, you can't forgive, which means it stops your blessing that God has for you. We just seen it right here in, in, uh, in Matthew 14. Matthew 14, Matthew 15, Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. If you do not forgive, my heavenly father will not forgive you. And sometimes we get so egotistical and we get so prideful. Well, amen, I, I ain't forgiving them that. Well, amen, I guess I won't have all the blessings of the Lord because I ain't forgiving that person. The devil is a liar. Don't let the devil come in. Hallelujah. I said, don't let the devil come in. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Because he told you in Philippians 4 and 27, neither give place to the devil. When you don't forgive, you're giving place to the devil. So how are you going to bind up loose and cast out and do miracles and do signs and wonders and you still got unforgiveness in your heart? Get that unforgiveness out of your heart, Lord. I'm hurting, but I have to forgive because it's in your word, and I truly want to forgive. They don't have to come back to me and say sorry. I want to forgive so I can be a child of the king. I want to forgive so I can get all the blessing from Christ Jesus. Glory to your mighty name. I said glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So understand something. Mm. We have to forgive. When you go over to Luke chapter 6 again and you go to verse 26, Jesus said, why call me ye, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and you do not the things which I say. I told you to forgive them. Hey, glory to God. You want to read that again in Luke 6 and 46? Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. 
Luke chapter 6, verse 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? I told you to forgive them. Some people may be dead and gone and in the grave, but in your heart, you still got to forgive them so you can be a functional person, so you can get all the blessings from Christ Jesus. I got to sit up there and pray, Lord, I forgive. Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I don't want to be angry at them. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Mm. Glory to your mighty name. Instead of jumping on them, you cast that spirit out of that person. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I cast you out of this person right now in the name of Jesus. You have no place. Mm. The blood of Jesus come against you. Mm. There's power in the name of Jesus. And every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Subject, have you, have you truly forgiven? And can you truly forgive? The question, have you truly forgiven? And can you truly forgive? Yes, you can truly forgive. You can truly forgive. Unlock that. You can truly forgive, not for them, for you. I said not for them, for you. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. <laughs> I said if not for them, for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -mm. Look, listen to me. You have to forgive being a saint of God because that's the word. It ain't, I'm going to hold this grudge for a year. What if you die in that year? I'm going to hold this grudge for a week. What's you, what if you die in that week? You can't get to heaven holding unforgiveness. And there's too many people in church who say they saved and they doing their best to live for God, but you have not forgiven. You have to forgive through all of your disappointments, through all of your hurt and through all of your pain. You have to forgive. That's what Jesus said. Jesus died on the cross for you. He has forgiven you for all your junk. It's up to you to forgive somebody else for what they did to you. They may have done it to you. They may have done it to your children. They may have done it to your parents. You still have to forgive. I didn't say it was easy, but you better work on it. You better say every day, Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I'm mad, but I'm doing my best to forgive him. Why? Because you said forgive him. I need more Holy Ghost, Lord. I need to have mercy, Lord. I forgive him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I forgive him. Glory to your mighty name. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The message today is, have you truly forgiven that person? And the other one is, can you truly forgive? And the answer is, yes, you can truly forgive. It is in the word. You can truly forgive. I didn't say your heart wasn't broke. Mm. I didn't say it wasn't painful to you. Mm. I didn't say you didn't get angry. Hey, but you got to forgive. Because listen to me, once you forgive, glory to God. When you think about that person or you see that person, your blood pressure won't go up. Hallelujah. Your heart won't be beating so hard. 
to you. You won't be saying, hey, I'm ready to fight today. Holy Ghost, help me today. Help me today. Hallelujah. You won't be telling your wife, uh, we got a savings account. I need you to come and bail me out. Glory to your mighty name. So let's just pray right now that the Lord truly give us a heart to forgive and a spirit to forgive and the mind to forgive. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, that you truly put it in our heart to forgive everyone who have offended us, Lord. Whether they talked about us, whether they lied on us, Father God, whether they did something to us. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you put it in our heart that we can truly forgive that person or those people or whoever was in that incident. Why? Because you said we have to forgive. Because if we don't forgive, mm, you will not forgive us. And we have already seen your love and your grace and your mercy in our life, Father God. We've seen it when we wasn't saved and you still delivered us. We've seen you, Father God, when we got saved and still made a mistake. We've seen your forgiveness and we've seen your love and we've seen your mercy. We've seen your long suffering. And I'm talking about with me, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you, Father God. Mm. Now I ask, Lord, that you anoint me and help me to heal my heart from this situation. Lord, I want to be real. I want to be right in your sight. Help me, Lord Jesus. Just like you have forgiven me, I want to forgive. I don't want nobody stopping me from getting into heaven because I did not forgive. I want to forgive with my whole heart. I want to forgive, Father God. I want them, I, look, if I ever see him again, I want them to feel the love and the anointing of Christ Jesus on the inside of me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. You have to forgive. You have to. Listen, I know it's hard. Mm -mm. This may be a sensitive subject, but listen, in order for you to live a, a peaceable life, you may have to forgive somebody who killed your child, who killed your husband, who killed your wife, who killed your mother, who killed your brother or your sister. Lord, help us today. Mm. Glory to your mighty name. You have to forgive. You got to. Before you go speaking in tongues and before you go casting out devils and raising the dead and the lame to walk and the dumb to talk, you got to forgive. Listen, you go to a church, you got to forgive folks in your church. Well, they knew about it and they, no, you got to forgive them. You have to forgive. And if you can't forgive them that day, you got to, every day, you got to say, Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I need you to help me to forgive them. I need you uh, to help me to release them out of my heart that I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. Hallelujah. And then some people have offended you and they have apologized and you won't accept. It. That's not right. Why you say, hallelujah. You say you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Mm. Glory to your mighty name. Lord, just like we want the heart of worship, we want the heart to forgive in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I cried over this, this situation, Lord. My heart was broke over the situation, but I got to forgive. 
I got to show love. I got to show Christ Jesus. Why are you a child of God? Why? Because you're a minister. Why? Because you're a pastor. Why? Because you're a bishop, an apostle, prophet, preacher, teacher, evangelist. Why? Because you teach children's church. Why? Because you work in the church parking lot. Hallelujah. Why? Because you own security. Hallelujah. Why? Because you work the sound up in church. Glory to your mighty name. We have to forgive because that is the commandment of Christ Jesus. Mm. Glory to your mighty name. I said it is the commandment of Christ Jesus. So let us pray again. Father God, we truly want a heart to forgive. Lord, we ask that you forgive us, Father God. Take out everything that's not like you, Jesus. Purge it out, scrape it out, Father. Give us open heart spiritual surgery that everything that shouldn't be, Father God, take it out, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, I do want to ask you, hallelujah, if you're not saved, this is the best time to do it. If you're in a backslidden position or some people call it out of fellowship with Christ, come back to him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say the prayer of repentance. And what is the prayer of repentance? The prayer of repentance is just being sincere with your prayer. Just be sincere about it. So I'm going to help you pray because some of y'all may be saying, I don't know what to pray. All I'm saying is I'll help you with the words. You just be sincere about it. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now, Lord. I am a sinner. I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you wash me from all of my sins. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you that you give me another chance. I come to you because I admit all of my faults, Lord. I lay it all down at the altar in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you for keeping me and thank you for delivering me in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus was raised on the third day. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall be and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised them up from the dead, thou shall be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. Unto the, but unto the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. You say, Jesus, thank you for saving me. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Lord, give me strength. Jesus, thank you. Say, Jesus is Lord. I believe that Jesus died on the third. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross. And on the third day, his heavenly father raised him up again. Hallelujah. I believe that. And I confess right now that Jesus Christ is Lord. We bind every spirit of witchcraft right now. We bind every spirit of stubbornness and rebelliousness in the name of Jesus right now. Get it out of our kids and out of our family in the name of Jesus. We bind heart attacks and strokes. We bind aneurysm. We bind worry and people being stressed out and they have a nervous breakdown. The devil is a liar. Lord, regulate their minds, Lord. Let there not be another nervous breakdown. What happened? Glory to God. Is there power in the name of Jesus or not? Are we walking in it? 
Hallelujah. Are, are we seeing miracles the way we should? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm finna let you go. Glory to your mighty name. I'm gonna give you the subject one last time. Have you truly forgiven and can you truly forgive? Can you truly forgive? The answer is yes. I took you to some scriptures. Now I do ask you to read it, study it. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. And remember, if you wanna get in contact with me, you can get in contact with me at HOD, H-O-D-I-M, 1117 at gmail.com. Or you can go to the website, hallelujah. And we got prayer, uh, a, prayer a section of prayer requests. Hallelujah. If you got any questions, H-O-D-I-M dot org. Hallelujah. That is our church website. Glory to your mighty name. And if you uh, feel led to join the ministry, give me a, a, a Hit me up on my email or the website, glory to God. I'll look it over. We'll contact you. Glory to God. God is good and God is merciful and God is loving. So it's up to us to forgive those who despitefully use us. It's up to us to forgive those who think we just don't know nothing. Lord Jesus, help me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. I do thank you for joining us. This is the Heart of David International Ministries. We will be back tonight at 6 p.m. Hallelujah for our evening service. Remember, God is always good, despite of everything. You need to ask God, Lord, let me truly forgive. Hallelujah. You may have been divorced 20, 30 years, but you still have not forgiven your spouse. You have to forgive. You may not forgive your spouse because they did something stupid and they locked up in prison right now, been in prison for 10, 20 years, and you still mad at them. You got to forgive. Once you forgive, it'll help you move on. Mm. You know, like I said, I'm not trying to be cruel or insensitive, but sometimes you got to have the Lord to help you. You got to forgive that person who killed your child. You got to forgive that person who, who killed your spouse. You got to forgive somebody who killed your mom and your daddy in order to function. How to, again, I didn't tell you to hang out with them. I didn't tell you to be their best friends. I didn't tell you to be a dummy for them. Hallelujah. In order for you and uh, to get healed, you have to forgive. A lot of people are not healed in church because they have not forgiven. You want God to help you, but God then told you, you have to forgive over this situation. I didn't say you had to go up to him and tell him you forgive him. I don't know. But when you're praying, Lord, I forgive him. I need you to help me to forgive them. Hallelujah. Because every time I think about it, I'm mad. I'm, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to go to blows. Hallelujah. Lord, I need you to forgive them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you and have a nice day. And I will see you at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. Have a nice day. Amen, amen.